Okay, one last example. What if we have, we'll start out with, this is the one-half Atwood. What if we have a block on an incline? It may or may not have friction. I bet you can treat it if you have friction. We'll say mu equals zero. We've got like a pulley system, and we've got the, a bigger mass hanging down there. Okay. So what's really going to happen is this little mass, we'll free body diagram it right there, it will have a normal force, and it will have its little mg, and they'll perfectly cancel out. And since there's no friction, we don't even have to worry about what the normal force and, and mg are. If there was, then we'd have an extra friction force back. Okay. <clears throat> so what we have is this force big mg is going to pull down or forward. Right? We're, we're using Newton's second law. Sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Okay, and so all we have, the only, the, the, the tension is an internal force, and if you actually free body diagrammed this problem, and you had big MG, excuse me, if you had big MG down and the force of tension is a little bit smaller up, and you made two equations, one for each block, and you said they're connected, they have to have the same acceleration, and then substitute it, and you could eliminate the force of friction, it would come out to just this result, where all you have, the sum of the, sum of the forces is just big Mg equals the sum of the masses, because this is a connected system. Thank goodness the rope is massless, and the pulley makes our math way easier. That's why physicists always claim they have massless ropes and massless pulleys because you would have to add the mass or the inertia in somehow. Okay? So then you can solve it really easily. Your acceleration is just big Mg, or big M times big M over the, the sum, the whole thing times G. And if we had some friction, if we had friction, what if, force of friction is mu mg, then we would just subtract it over here. We would have minus mu little mg. Plus big mg. We could factor out our g's if we wanted. Big m plus little m equals a. Okay, if we have it. But if not, so it's really easy. So even if you independently free body the masses, the tension can be canceled out. It's an internal force. You can look at the two masses together as one system. Okay, so whether you're just dragging along on a surface, like problem two in your packet, or if one is over the, maybe we use the weight of this one, one is off the ledge and there's a pulley, but it drags the mass of them both, well, you just total the mass. Any questions? Got that written down? That's the super easy one. Oh, we'll flip to a new page and do that one. That's my time. Okay. Can totally do this in five minutes. And then be done. In honors, you were supposed to watch me do this last year. You should have seen something like it in some other physics class. Okay. Good. Honors actually broke down and asked me yesterday, can we have the PDF of the stuff that you wrote so we can catch up fast on our notes later because we couldn't keep up in class. If you need to ask that, please do. Okay, the Atwood machine is a safety and efficiency system for an elevator. We have a pulley. We have a big mass, which is usually... We have an mg and a force of tension. We have a big mass, which is like the full elevator car, and we'll have a little weight, which is the counterweight. 
and on a modern elevator the counterweight is equal in mass to the empty elevator so the motor and the brakes when the elevator is empty has to do almost no work and it only has to really do work when uh, when there's people in the elevator when it's got cargo okay <coughs> But there's a simple trick to this problem. And I'm going to show you this so you can combine it with your. So you've got an inclined plane on problem three where, okay, you're going to have mg sine theta down the ramp. So one of the terms becomes mg sine theta. And I think, and you have no friction, so awesome. So you're just going to substitute one of these for mg sine theta. The best thing to do is to take your x axis and say down over here is minus x and my x-axis actually turns around and I have plus x going this way. Okay, you could even say this is forward on the, the heavy elevator side. What that does is it turns the problem into like a tug of war where you have big M and it points in the positive direction with big M times G as a force on it. you'll have little m, and because of the pulley in the way, like we don't really need that pulley, it will have minus mg as a force on it, okay? And it could have some friction on it. It could have, we could throw in lots of different things in the minus direction, okay? The force of tension is actually everywhere on the rope, right? That's how a cable, a non-stretchable uh, <coughs> chain or physics cord cable works. Okay, it's got all the same tension all along the rope. If it could have different tensions, if it could stretch and bounce, that would be a spring. And that's a different chapter. So this is not a spring. It connects these two objects and really makes one system. So we have one system with a mass of big M plus little m. And we've got a positive force. So we can just say it's acceleration. We could call it AY or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just call it A because we defined our weird axis. It's the sum of the forces plus big M g minus little mg over the total mass, big M plus little m. It's customary to factor that out and say big M minus little m over big M plus little m, g. Okay. For, for multiple choice questions, difference over the sum times g for an Atwoods machine might be worth memorizing that's really easy to remember. <coughs> big M minus little m, big M plus little m. Um, <coughs> fantastic. Then I would actually use my skills. Okay, and remember, I would use my skills if they changed anything or if we're solving, we would also like to solve for the tension. But if we had an incline, right, if I had an incline, which we're not going to do the example here, but your homework is, this could just be minus little mg sine theta. That's the component of the force that slides down. If we had some friction in there, we would just add more components, and we still just have the two masses. Okay, so we could do that if we had the incline. I'm going to strike it through because it doesn't apply right here. To get the force of tension, I want a free body diagram one of the masses. And actually, I always tease honors and do the wrong one. We're going to do little m. Okay, because little m actually accelerates upward. And it has a force on it, plus force of tension. And it has a, a force down on it, minus mg. That's also the side where my x or y axis, my axis, whatever I made up, is actually in the right directions. Up is positive, down is negative. So it's smarter to diagram little m. If you correctly free body diagram and calculate for big M, it would get the same answer. You just have more negative signs floating everywhere. Okay, so my acceleration equals the vector sum of my forces. Well, I only have two forces. Ft up minus little mg divided by the total mass of this little thing. Okay, but that acceleration also equals that big acceleration that I just calculated. Anybody stuck on that? Especially people who were nodding earlier, shaking their heads. 
So far, so good. That's Newton's second law. <clears throat> I'll, after the video, I'll cl quiz you on the first and second and first and third laws. But that's it. So I can just have here's my picture. Let's cut that out. That acceleration equals big M minus little m over big M plus little m times g. They're equal, and then I can solve for the force of tension. Okay, that means I can multiply both sides by m, and I can add the little thing, and I've almost got it. Add little m times g. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have to do a little. So, especially for E and M for next semester, your what would I call it? Math agility, or your wait. We want a minus, and we want a blank, and an mg right there. I can't scroll up without oh, really shrinking it. Let's see if I actually, maybe I can. Come here. It wants to highlight. No, make it bigger. Yes. And now up. Almost. Oh, I have to extend it a moment. Ah, it's just going to shrink it again. Oh, no, it didn't. Hooray! See, I'm gaining new, <laughs> sort of, new technology skills. So let me strongly encourage you to polish up your algebra skills. Uh, because E and M, this is next semester, this is going to be bananas. There's going to be crazy amounts of algebra. Everything squared, R1 minus R2, quantity cubed, divided by this and that, and that is just madness. Okay? Electricity is really hard. It's really complicated. So, put in a little extra practice now if this is too much. Like, all I have to do is throw common denominators on this. So I need, I need common denominators to add these together. Big M plus little m big M plus little m, if you're not so sure of yourself on algebra, or if this is like a complicated step for you, you need some more practice. But look, my little m squared, I'm going to have minus little m squared times g, and I'm going to have plus little m squared times g. So those just go away. And all that's going to persist is twice the big M times little m g. Whoops. Ah, any order. And then over the sum. And that's my tension on an Atlas machine. The only major difference, if I had like a tilted one, like on your problem three, is instead of just a 2mg, I'm going to have 2mg sine theta in there. So there'll be a sine. Okay, and it might have to be even like 1 plus 1 or something like that. Like, like big M times little m, g, or w times 1 plus sine of theta instead of 2. Okay. You okay with that? If you have those all in your notes, then you have the pieces. That was 13 minutes. Awesome.